Okay, welcome back for the second part of this. Uh, so we're going to start making the actual grid and putting buttons in it now. So let's jump into Unity. Okay, and first thing we're going to do on our canvas here, uh, we're gonna, oops. we are going to make a button using Text Mesh Pro. We just got to import it quick. Okay, and I'm just going to name this one. We're just going to call it grid space, and I'm going to do zero. Okay, and we just want to reset this here. And we're going to set the size to 128 by 128. So that's going to kind of be like we're going to put one of these in each grid space here. So it gives a bit of a buffer, so you have to actually click in the middle. Okay, so next thing we're gonna do here, let's just set these colors. So these can be anything. I'm just gonna go with kind of a normal color. Yeah, I'll go with you know something like this. Highlighted. You know what? Let's go back here. Set this as a preset. I'm select it, and I'm just gonna kind of go a bit darker for the highlighted, make a preset of that. And we'll do the same for the pressed. We'll just go even darker. And preset that one as well. Okay, so now we have all of these. And just checking my notes here. Okay, so we have all that, let's just go Set this. I'll leave the title as text, that's fine. Uh, just going to set it as blank for now. We don't actually need anything in there. Uh, you know what, actually, while it's here, let's just kind of do a little test. So we'll just put an X in there and just kind of see what a good size is. Do something like that. So we'll set it to, say, 140. Okay, now I'm going to make it as blank, but that's what will be in there when we actually use it. And, you know, what, let's find a color. I'm thinking we'll just do red. Yeah, red looks good. Okay, so we'll delete that. And we're going to save this now as a prefab. Let's just make a prefab folder. Prefabs. I guess we don't really need the, you know what, I'm going to remove the zero off the name just for the sake of it, but in the scene we'll keep the zero so then we know which one is which. Okay, and what we're going to have to do is duplicate this eight times. That should be it. So yeah, so we have one for each spot. And we're just going to need to actually move these. So what we're going to do is the order of these is going to matter later the way we're doing it. So we're going to want to go start at zero will be the top left corner. So it'd be zero, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight in that order. That way we always know how to reference them. So for zero, we're just going to set the position and just following that guide from the other one, it already has them. They worked out the math on it. It's negative 170 and 170. Um, you could manually do it or just work out the math yourself. It, it's pretty straightforward. And we're just going to move each of these to all the other places. So now that we have one, it's pretty easy if we just use the, the move tool. It's actually going to use a bit of a snap and actually put them there. So we can just kind of... Uh, oh, you know what? This one won't. As long as we set the Y properly... For the X, we can do 170, since everything's centered around zero. Okay, and now this one will snap. That one stays in the middle. This one will snap here. Let's go, this guy will snap there. Okay, 
Okay. This guy snaps there. And this one snaps right there. So now they're all evenly spaced, everything's set up there. So what we're going to do now is on the prefab, we just got to open this one up into prefab mode and we're going to put a script on it. So let's add components and just call it grid space. That's what they did in that tutorial there. Just wait for it to add and then we will open it up. Uh, one thing too, if you do follow that tutorial on the Unity site, um, they used regular text, but I'm trying to get in the habit of using Text Mesh Pro for everything, so I'm just changing that, but it's it's a minor change. Okay, so let's open Grid Space. So in the code, you'll see a few little different things, like uh, we have to include all the Text Mesh Pro instead of regular text, but that's no big deal. Okay, so starting, we just got to use Unity Engine.UI. That'll get us so we can access the button. And then we got to use Unity TM Pro. So we have that. Uh, I don't think we're going to need starter update, but we can add them back if we do later. Okay, so first thing we're going to need, we're just going to make them public so it's easier. We need a button. I'm just going to call it my button. That's going to be the actual button component that this is on. And then we also need uh, Text Mesh Pro. And I always forget the name of this. Uh, I know it when I see it. Text Mesh Pro UGUI, that's the one. And I guess we'll just call this, we'll call it button text. Okay, so we have that. And then we also just want to set. Uh, again, these don't need to be public. You could just serialize them or um, actually most you don't even really need to, but just to make it simple and this is what the tutorial will use. So I'm just going to keep them public for now. Uh, we'll call this player side. This is just going to be the string that basically saves if it's going to be an X or an O when you click. So you know what? We are going to put a start. And then we'll do my button equals get component button. And then we'll also do button text equals get component. Oh, actually, this will be get component in children. And then it'll be the text mesh pro UGOI. So because the, the text is actually a child of it, we just have to use that one. Okay, and what we will need to do is make a function. So basically when you when you click on it, what it's going to want to do is set the, the text component to whatever string is in player side. So it'll be either the X or the O. And starting out, it's, it's all going to be the player doing it. So you click once, it'll be an X. You click the next time, it'll be an O. But when everything's said and done, then we'll change it. So the other side will actually be the computer doing it. Uh, so to start this, oh, and once you do that too, once you've set it, we're going to set the button to non-interactable. That way you can't click it again or it won't, it won't register any input after that point. So let's just set this public void. We're going to call it set space. Okay, and in here we're going to do button text dot text equals player side and then my button dot interactable is going to be false. Okay, and that just disables it. Um, so we don't actually have anything set in that yet. Um, so when we when we click, we're going to have to actually tell it to to run this, but for right now, uh, I'm just going to stop this video here. I'm going to try keeping them fairly short so they don't get really long each. But in the next one, we'll start actually putting the, the code so when you click. Okay, see you in the next video.